Welcome. Today, we're going to learn all about life in the White House from a perspective few ever get to see. For over 25 years, Roland Messnier was preparing cuisine for the most powerful people in the world. Welcome, Roland. Thank you, Holly. Thank you. You know, it, 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 you really, your life really is an amazing journey uh, from, from France to the White House. Can you tell us, mm -hmm. how, how was life for you in the beginning? Yes. Well, you know, I was born in a very humble home in France, mm -hmm. family of nine children. We had no electricity and no running water, so you can imagine the life we had. Right. And um, I simply love the food business for some reason, because, you know, everything we ate in that house was made from scratch, of course, right. whenever we could even find the ingredient. Because remember, we just came out of the war right. with Germany. So right. France was still not uh, back to normal. Even when I was 12, 14, 15, we were still lacking mm -hmm. some ingredient. Right. So uh, at what point you, did you decide you were going to become a chef? Because that's a pretty Age big 12. dream. Age, Age 12. 12. Uh -huh. I spent my summertime, you know, in those years you didn't go to Cancun <laughs> or places like this on your break. Uh -huh. You worked. Uh -huh. You made money for the family. Mm -hmm. And on a, I, age 12, uh, I spent my summer vacation, uh, my two months, uh, working for a small bakery. Mm -hmm. And I was so blown away mm -hmm. by the transformation of ingredients. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mix flour, sugar, butter, eggs, whatever, put it in the oven, you watch this dough rise, and the smell, incredible smell. And Th that for me was it. Uh, this is going to be my life. Uh -huh. And guess what? 53 years later, still mixing and baking. Uh, still doing the same yes. thing and getting just as excited oh, about it. Oh, I love, I love every minute of yes. it. Uh, how did you get the job at the White House? Uh, first of all, you have to know that I turned that job down about two or three times. Oh, really? I'm probably the only chef who can say that. Because oh, wow. most chefs would give an arm and a leg for a job at the White House. Right. And I was working at the time in a very beautiful hotel in Southern Virginia called the Homestead Hotel. Oh. Beautiful resort. Mm -hmm. And I loved it there. Mm -hmm. For me, that was, that was it. That was for the rest of my life. Right. But then the Carter people started coming to the Homestead, staff from the Carter administration. Oh, okay. Well, you know, they were holding meetings, meetings there. Oh, okay. We were having the, uh, the you know, problem with uh, energy and everything. So they were having a lot of meetings. So, I met a lot of those people, mm -hmm. and one lady said, you know, Mrs. Carter looking for a pastry chef. You do beautiful work, I think you should apply for the job. I said, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. I am very fine here. Mm -hmm. And they keep pushing and pushing, you know, and mm -hmm. I turned them down all the time. Mm -hmm. Until one day they, they asked me to come to the White House for, um, for a tour. Mm -hmm. Not an interview, a tour. Mm -hmm. And when I'm in the White House, suddenly the first lady shows up. Oh, how, how? Yeah, Amazing, our yeah. convenience yeah, was it, right, you know. Yeah. Now, I tell you what, when I met Mrs. Carter, she was absolutely the, the best. I've never met somebody any friendlier than Mrs. Carter those days. I mean, mm -hmm. she opened her arm and called me by my first name, mm -hmm. gave me a hug. Then we had a 15 minutes meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, after those 15 minutes meeting, I had the job. Wow. You know, but I must also uh, say, you know, those days I was awfully cute, you know. Right. I was probably the cutest pastry you, chef they ever right, seen. Right, yeah. What, you yeah know, the whole package. I mean, <laughs> so that helped probably a little right. bit too. And I was already also into low-calorie dessert. Oh, interesting. I was Is always, all my life, as b I've been focusing on producing healthy dessert. Hmm. There is no reason why you cannot have a healthy dessert. Oh, that's good news. I'm this happy is to good hear news, it. but most of the people dismiss it when I say that by just laughing. Mm -hmm. So you're totally serious. But I can prove, you can see my recipe, see what's in it, mm -hmm. and calculate the calories yourself, really, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and see that it is really a very good recipe, very good dessert. You and, and you have numerous books which actually show people how I've, to do that. Uh, I've wrote five books since I came out of the White House. Right. Now, you worked for six presidents, right? Five. Oh, it was five, presidents? five presidents, okay. Yes. And uh, beginning with President Carter, who yes. was the most interesting out of, of all those? I know that's well, a you tough know, question. Well, you know, I would say the, the Reagan administration mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Mrs. Reagan was a total perfectionist mm -hmm. to the core about everything, mm -hmm. about absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. She made the White House uh, the number one place in the world probably at that time. Because of her attention to her detail? Her attention to detail. And she had excellent taste? Excellent taste. I mean, those people had entertained in high level all their life, mm -hmm. been the governors of California for eight years, sure. been in a show business for I don't know how many years, you know, right. Hollywood. Right. They, they have those big famous party mm -hmm. and everything. So, so she was uh, perfectly fit to be the first lady of the land at that time. Right. Yeah. And let me tell you, she... Uh, when she had something in mind, there was not saying no to Mrs. Reagan. Mm -hmm. The only word she wanted to hear from you, yes, madam. Mm -hmm. That's it. So what would be an example of the kind of thing she would request that would be difficult? Well, she, she didn't exactly request, but she would, you, because you had to make sample of the food you were going to make. Mm -hmm. And if she didn't like what you produced, back to the drawing board until she would like what mm -hmm. you showed her. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had an instant where we were going to have uh, the Queen of Holland at the White House. Mm -hmm. And I was showing already five desserts. I mm -hmm. had already shown her five desserts, mm -hmm. which she totally uh, rejected. Ah. Until she said to me, I know what I like to have. I like you to make me some sugar basket. You know, basket made yeah. of sugar. Right. Very, very tricky and very hard work. Mm -hmm. Need 15 of them, one per table. Mm -hmm. filled with ice cream and sorbet, fresh fruit. And I want the basket to be decorated with sugar tulips because Holland is the country for tulips. Mm -hmm. See, everything is sure. connected together. Sure. Now, uh, that was two days before the dinner. So I told Mrs. Reagan, I said, that sounds like a fabulous dessert. Be happy to do it. But I only have two days left. She replied, correction, you have two days and two nights. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. Yes, oh my, that's what yeah. I said, and yeah. other words. Yeah. But uh, I just thank her, turn around, and start working. Yes. And I produced those baskets. Right. And everybody was so happy. Mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Reagan, the guest of honor, everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, after that, you go home feeling like the king on the hill. Yes. Because you have surpassed yourself. Yes. This is when I learned uh -huh. that this is what I have to do in the White House. Right. I have to surpass myself every single time. Therefore, I'm known in the White House, mm -hmm. for I've never made the same dessert twice oh. in 26 years. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you. Uh. That's the staff gave me that title, not me. Oh, wow. Well. Now, uh, is that, do you just do the desserts mostly for the special occasion type dinners? How about every day? Every day, uh -huh. for anything. If it's uh, just the family, mm -hmm. if it's uh, a tea, making cookies, Whatever I had to do with bread, pastry, Danish pastry, that came all under me. Mm -hmm. And the, the pastry department in the White House, uh, those days were the busiest. Oh, really? Because more than the main kitchen. Because we had a lot of tea, or sometimes breakfast that was just Danish pastry and coffee. Mm -hmm. The kitchen had no involvement with that. Right. So the pastry was very, very busy, more than the kitchen. Right. Now, who was... Um, so so because of Nancy Reagan's professional or um, Perfection. perfectionism, that that was actually a good thing from the standpoint that oh, her high me, standards yes, yes, it, it drove you to definitely. Heights. I okay. I cannot thank her enough. Right. Because she's the one who put me on that that track. Yeah. Of of, of, of researching yeah. and always going higher and higher and higher. And after they left, I continued that until my last day. Okay. So now when you see shows like The Cake Boss, um, you know, that kind of thing, where they're constructing all this stuff. Now yeah, you do things yeah. very differently. That's yes, almost yes. Uh, laughable well, to you, right? Well, it is laughable. And I could see I laugh my head off right now. <laughs> I mean, The Cake Box Boss, uh -huh. and this kind of a show, this is made for television. Yes. And uh, there's so many components inside, whatever they make that you can't eat, like PVC pipe, wire, Mm -hmm. All sort of thing that shouldn't be in a cake. Right. But of course, they're not going to show you that, right. you see. Mm -hmm. I know they're there. And most people, I don't know if they know that, but they will after this show. Right. In my, going back to my dessert, mm -hmm. everything you see is food. I do not use prop whatsoever. 
So it's an engineering feat. It's an engine, exactly, exactly. So mm -hmm. and the dessert has to be sturdy enough to remember they have to, to go from the kitchen to the dining room, go around where the guests serve themselves, and no accident is allowed to happen. So, no accident. So that and so, what what would be an example of something that you would create of, of somebody served because the guests serve themselves in the wine house. Oh, really? I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, the, the dessert is a big dessert for ten. Okay. And uh, this is passed around the table. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, okay. and the people are giving a big fork and and and, uh, and spoon, mm -hmm. and they go into the dessert, meaning they take whatever part they like and how much they like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, of course. If the dessert is not stable, if the dessert happens to tilt mm -hmm. or something will roll off the dessert <laughs> and end up in your beautiful dress mm -hmm. that you spend a fortune to come to that dinner, that wouldn't be too cool, mm -hmm. you know. So that has to be avoided at any cost. So I remember Mrs. Reagan, when I showed her a couple of my desserts that were very towering, she would look at them and say to me, Roland, you are totally crazy. Mm -hmm. We can't not serve that. Mm -hmm. I said, Mrs. Reagan, why? Because it's going to fall on the lady's dress. Mm -hmm. I said, please, check it out. And she would grab this dessert and literally <laughs> shake it. And then she said, okay, that's a go. Mm -hmm. That's a go. So y you had to prove that yes. whatever the creation might be, yes. wherever I dug into it with yes. my fork was Nothing not going to fall. Happen. Nothing would so happen. I don't, uh, that is yeah. astonishing. Well, there's a lot of I got it, the mechanic, the engineering. Yeah. And without using PVC pipe, may right, I say, right, you know. Yeah, they can't dig in you and know, find PVC no, 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 or no, no, wood no, no, no. or Everything has styrofoam. To be yeah, you right. know, if they want to break a piece, like when we did the chocolate carriage for the queen, right. if they want to take off the wheel, eat the wheel, it's fine, it's good chocolate, and the carriage will not even tilt. Oh, my gosh. So there is a special mechanic, which I'm not about to reveal today, mm -hmm. <laughs> but if somebody pay me enough, I may show them how to do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. So y the other thing that, that is so fascinating about what you did is that you really got to observe events firsthand um, and experience them in a way that nobody else or few other people do. Um, so, for example, just beginning with the Carters, what, what was it like when the hostage crisis occurred? And how, how did, does that type of thing affect what you're doing? Well, I speak for myself as, as a staff, a member of the staff in the White House. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever the mood is in the White House, it affects you a lot. Mm -hmm. And we knew during the hostage situation, during mm -hmm. the Carter administration, right. uh, that the president was working around the clock at the end to get them out. Mm -hmm. And we knew once that something was in the making when we were told that uh, the night before it happened that uh, Reverend Billy Graham was coming to the White House to have dinner with them. Mm -hmm. So that usually was, a, as a matter of fact, he showed up at the White House when every event was of this kind was about to take place. Oh, that's interesting. Meaning war and stuff. Hmm, interesting. Showed up and pray with the family. They pray. Oh, interesting. Yes, yes. And we knew when we know Billy Graham is here for dinner, oh, oh, what's going to blow up tomorrow morning? We don't know. <laughs> well, that's the way we saw it oh, as the staff. Yeah. And we also knew that same night that they had requested big trays of sandwiches for the Oval Office. Mm -hmm. That means they're going to be working through the night. Yes. So something is definitely up. Mm -hmm. So food was an, a, a very reliable cue oh, yes. about what was coming up. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We knew the, you know, we didn't know exactly, but sure. we knew something was up, you know. Yeah. And, and what about the aftermath of, of the attempt to assassinate President Reagan? What was that like? Well, that was, again, um, tremendously scary for us mm -hmm. because we did not know if that was maybe the beginning of a series of assault against the White House. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be more of that? Mm -hmm. Which we did add more of that later on. Yes. Much later on, but we did. And, and, and I am a witness to what has happened. Sure. Uh, but President Reagan uh, w was really the first wake-up call, I would say, that we, though it had nothing to do with terrorism at that point, you know, that was a... But it, uh, the vulnerability. But then we, we do, you, you start thinking, what if, you know. Right. 
And um, the, uh, of course, then he stayed in the hospital for a while, as you know. Mm -hmm. Again, food played a role. Oh, really? Because uh, Mrs. Reagan would visit him every day, of course, and she uh, is doctor at giving us a little list of what we can, he can have and can't have. Did and you send food to the hospital? Then I used to uh, prepare food that mm -hmm. Mrs. Reagan took over. One, he loved homemade coconut ice cream I used to make. Mm -hmm. That was very good for him. Uh, I used to make certain cookies that he could have without nuts and stuff like these. Mm -hmm. And also, I used to make a white wine jelly with seedless grapes, and they were also peeled. Mm. And that is something the doctor said is very good for him. Yes. So I used to make the coconut ice cream, the white wine jelly, and some of the cookies that Mrs. Reagan would take to him every day. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, fascinating. And he loved, uh, President Reagan had a sweet tooth. Like, yeah. Oh, it was incredible. Mm. To watch his face when he had dessert, he it just, his face would totally change. So he was like a little kid, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, absolutely amazing. He was a wonderful man. I mean, very friendly with the staff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and she, she was extremely nice, too, you know. Like, but she was consumed by perfection, uh -huh. you know. And everything that her husband is going to receive, she would look over. Mm -hmm. See, now, wait a minute. What, what are you feeding my husband here, you know? Mm -hmm. Is it, is it? what he needs or what, you know. So, so, so her legendary dedication to President Reagan is not it's a not fantasy. So, oh, no, 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 no. That's it's not a fantasy. The closeness in their uh, marriage is not a fantasy. They were very close, those two, absolutely very close. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, they leave one for, uh, for the other, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. their, their life was totally intertwined. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, it was a wonderful couple. Yeah. How about President Bush and, and the whole Iraq war and surrounding yes. that? What was that like? You mean you uh, President W. Bush? Yes, uh -huh, yes, when he was trying to. Well, again, think about there, the that was a um, uh, scary time. Mm -hmm. Again, we had the visit of the Reverend at the White House the before it started. Reverend Graham came yes, again, huh? Yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, President Bush was very affected by this war. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said many times, I've seen every president of the United States during my time, I saw them laugh and I saw them cry, wow. every one of them. Hmm. Amazing. And President Bush was very affected by uh, the young uh, people that uh, were lost at the time. Sure. And he did a lot of things for them, I mean, wrote letters and he was very, very close mm -hmm. to all that. Uh, his feeling, I mean, he, you could see that he was uh, consumed by what was going on there mm -hmm. day by day by day. You and know. It very involved in it. And again, the food played a role, a lot of trays of sandwiches and stuff. Well, or, not, or not that much at the time. It was kind mm -hmm. of a different kind of invasion, but we, we, we were very careful what we fed him during that time, especially at the beginning, you know, at the beginning of the war. Uh, in not, what way? Well, we don't I like it. dessert. I try to give them nothing with us, uh, acid. Mm -hmm. Like lemon. Oh, really? Uh, well, because he, has, he, he has enough aggravation already. Yes. What he needs is something uh, very soft, easy to digest. Uh, in, if it's cool, probably warm dessert. And this is the attention you have to give them. Without talking with them, they don't have time to talk to you right. about dessert. They have bigger, bigger fish to catch, you know right. what I'm saying? Sure. So, no. Uh, they, they don't want to. Sp they don't want you to go bother them. Said, Mr. President, what would you like? No, no, no. Please, you figure it out yourself. Yes, of course. You know, and then if you do a good job, you'll know. So there is a, a, a real methodology to, to determining the right kind of dessert to serve. Definitely. From, you know, based on definitely what's going on in someone's definitely. life, whether it's soothing or stimulating, exactly. or hot or cold. The weather of the day. Mm -hmm. we, we we for the family we made a weekly menu, lunch and dinner, mm -hmm. that the first lady would check at the beginning of the week and approve some or disapprove or change something. Mm -hmm. And then this was the food for the week. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time I would change without even uh, telling anyone. Mm -hmm. Because I said, now wait a minute, since this morning the weather was nice, uh, now it's 20, 20 degrees. Mm -hmm. And it was 60 this morning. Right. Can't give them ice cream for dessert. Mm -hmm. Forget that. Let's do a nice warm dessert of right. some kind. Yeah. Or the 
Today, they've been beating on the president's head. I mean, in Washington, you know, yeah. they beat on him every single day. Sure. You uh -huh. know, even today, they still beat on him, and he has nothing to do with anything. They blame him uh, about everything. The sure. weather, everything was blamed on George W. Bush, which right. is terrible. So I was trying to follow that and say, now, you know, he didn't have a good day today. Let's, let's try to put something that I know he would love tonight. That's comforting and he loves. Yes, and yes. Make and get his mind away at the same time. Yeah. So, you, you know, maybe, maybe a three-minute conversation about the dessert. Yes. You know, I remember once when he came to the White House, mm -hmm. I created my first Texan <laughs> uh, dessert. Oh, great. And the title of the dessert was named Tumbleweed. Oh. Isn't it great? That's And it looks like a bunch of tumbleweed like you see rolling that's, on the street. Oh, that's great. What and was he it? Loved, he loved it. It was a, a dessert made of chocolate ice cream and honey ice cream. Oh, my. With nuts in it and candied stuff and crunchy. And then uh, the, the, the tumbleweed part was done with sponge sugar sprayed with chocolate. Oh. So it looked just like the tumbleweed. Oh, that's and wonderful. around that dessert, because at the time I created that, we were going into the cold days. Mm -hmm. Then I made some warm red wine poche pear that I put around the dessert. Uh. So you had your warm pear, mm -hmm. and we passed a hot wine sauce, and then you had your ice cream in yeah. it. So it's, it's the best of both worlds. Oh. And he, he just loved the idea of having tumbleweed. Oh, that sounds uh, delightful. You know, yes, yeah. yes. What about uh, President Clinton's era, especially during the difficult times of his indiscretions yes, and when he was yes. indicted? What was that like? Well, at that time, he was not only the only one affected. I think everybody was in the White House, yeah. and, uh, including Mrs. Clinton. And, and Chelsea. Sure, sure. I felt very bad for Chelsea. Yes, right, I'm sure. Because she was in a young age where she... It must. It was tough on her. There's no doubt. Yes. You know. So, and Chelsea has always been a wonderful young lady. Mm -hmm. She carried herself beautifully mm -hmm. during and after. Always, Chelsea will always be on my mind of being a really great person. Uh huh. Great. And uh, and Mrs. Clinton. So of course, um, during those days. They needed comfort food. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you when you under pressure, you eat more than normal. Sure. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Clinton has a cake that she likes. It's called the mocha cake. Oh. That's her favorite cake. And she used, when she would have problem, she would always call, say, can I have a mocha cake? Yeah. So I knew things were not doing too well. Uh -huh. then. Right. And she ordered a lot of mocha cake during that time, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And he, you know, him the same, we didn't see much of them, you know, for a while it was yes. sequest sequestration practically sure. until they came out and then uh, decide which way they were going to go, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that certainly, I, I think, it would have affected the whole mood of, of the White House. Oh, the entire house. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we, were, uh, we were really uh, sad for the family. We mm -hmm. felt their pain, as they say. Mm -hmm because it's, uh, it was terrible. Mm -hmm. You could see it in Mrs. on Mrs. Clinton's face, Chelsea's face, of course, the president's face. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, he was, uh, for me, it was a very, very sad time, mm -hmm. one of the saddest times. Mm -hmm. uh, the other time that is just as sad is when they leave office. Uh, really? And especially if they were defeated before uh, the, the first term. Mm -hmm. That would be the saddest moment mm -hmm. in the White House. At, uh, Many for, tears. Right, yeah. Uh, it's interesting how, you know, f from our perspective in the papers, we just see things sort of politically in yeah, the way the yeah. newspaper but portrays it. But you really see you, the human You're close side. to them. We're very close. We learn to love them. Mm -hmm. Whoever. Whoever. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, for me, it didn't matter if they were Republican or Democrat. You love the family. Mm -hmm. Now, at first, when they come in, you don't love them. You hate them. Oh, really? Because they're taking the job of the guy that you love. No, oh, I see. The one who is leaving. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. You, you, your allegiance is to that family. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly they tell you, well, not tomorrow, no more. This is this guy. Right. You kind of hate those people for a while. Say, what the hell are they doing here? You know? <laughs> Why are they here? <laughs> this is so-and-so's house. Yeah. And then with a month or so, 
-hmm. You love them just as the other guy. Right. Um, what, who were some of the most, uh, some of the interesting stories about some of your most famous guests, like Prince Charles or Mikhail Gorbachev or people yes. like that? Yeah. We didn't, we didn't met guests, you know, mm -hmm. that was not our right. role, you know. Yes. Our role is, that's the role of the President First Lady, you sure. know, and we're not there to go and shake hands with them. But some, somehow, sometimes, we had some interaction, maybe not directly. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll tell you, like Mr. Gorbachev, a mm -hmm. very nice story. First of all, you know, when he came to Washington, they loved him in Washington. Yes. Mm -hmm. The American people loved Gorbachev. That is no question about it. And I like him too. I really like Gorbachev. Raisa, not so much. You know, Raisa, his wife. You know, right. There were, there were problems between her and Mrs. Reagan, you know. Yes. But um, that's to them to work it out. But when Gorbachev left, went back to Russia, a couple of weeks later, a huge box arrived, a brown box, from the Kremlin, hmm. from Mr. Gorbachev, huh. for President Reagan. That box was delivered to the kitchen. Huh. And uh, the head usher, which would be like the general manager of the White House, mm -hmm. came to, uh, to us in the kitchen. We were only two men working that day, the executive chef and myself. Mm -hmm. He came and said, whatever in that is in that box has to be destroyed. Well, that was the rule in the White House. Mm -hmm. You could not accept any food, anything that came as a gift to the family. Right. Or to be, because you never know if he's been tempted with. Right. So I said, we said, okay, we're going to do it. So that was a Friday afternoon, and a, it's kind of slow in the White House because President goes to Camp David and everything. So we, I opened the box, and I see two big round tin like these and that tall with ice pack around. So I pull it tin out and open it. Seven pound of caviar. Russian oh caviar. Oh my. So I look at the other chef and I said, you know about you, I don't know about you, but I'm willing to die for that <laughs> stuff. So I'm not going to dump it. I'm taking it home, if you don't <laughs> mind. You can have the other one, but I'm taking this one home. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was very uh, thankful to Mr. Gorbachev yes, for sending that he, to the White House. Yes, that's He never knew, but uh, we did enjoy the caviar very much. Ah, uh, yes. Well, that's wonderful. Unfortunately, we are out of time, and I wish we had more time. You have so many fascinating stories. Yes. Um, I, I really appreciate you taking the time Thank to you, stop Holly. by and, and talk with us. And, you know, I've never really considered how the staff is affected by events at the White House yes. and how about you. Uh, have you ever thought about this? Well, we do need to be praying for those who serve our leaders year in yes. and year out. Yes to inspire them and to help them to do their best and to comfort them. So please tell us what you think uh, on Facebook, Twitter, or our website. Thank you so much for watching.